Coming up next. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the power of healing. I believe in that. And I still believe in that today. Even though my husband, first husband went on to be with the Lord through cancer, I believe in the power of laying on of hands and God healing people. Because why? The entirety of his word. Don't let, because it hadn't happened to you, don't let that stand in your way from the power of God working in your life. Satan wants to use these things to steal what he has for you. Because he is promising in these last days, we're going to walk in the power that you've never seen. You better get ready. But only those who are preparing are going to do it. If you're kind of sitting on the fence there, you know, what does he said? He neither wants you hot. He'd rather have you hot or cold, but none of this lukewarm stuff. You're not going to see the power if you're lukewarm. But that power is going to come upon the church. There is going to be a greater pouring, outpouring. The latter rain is coming, people, because we're going to need it. <laughs> I need it now. So I'm looking for it now. I'm prophesying for it now. I'm believing for it now. Stay tuned for this exciting message with Pastor Tikva. We don't like change. We're humans. We don't like change. But you know, God's all about change. God is about change. God's about taking a walk. And I don't want to take this walk because I don't have faith in that walk. I got faith in this walk. Because in 1952, the word of the Lord came to me, and by golly, I'm stuck on old wine and old manna. But if I step in here, I have no faith. But God's going to give you the faith. Take it out of thought for what you're going to do and walk in the faith because God's going to raise up a people who are no longer worried about what's going to happen. They're going to know that God's in control. And the glory of God will be revealed when you step out of your little box. I tell you this, nobody can touch me. Do not allow anybody to touch your shalom zone, your Goshen, your separation to God. When you allow somebody to tick you off, you just said, I don't care about the God in me. Come on in and destroy me. Turn your cheek. Say, insult me again. It doesn't matter. You are God's. Would you look at somebody and say, I prophesy over the person next to me that you're going to be God's anointed this week. Order your copy of the Goshen Bubble by visiting www.twopraise.net. Praise God. Well, it is an honor, a privilege, and a truly a blessing to be back back with you all. It was here, what, in October for Tabernacles, and uh, the Lord made a way for me to come again, and so I do have to take this time and welcome all my Iowa friends. Hi, guys. I hope you're watching. I'm, I hope you're taking notes, because I'm going to ask you when I get back, but praise God. Um, yes, God is doing a work in Iowa, and you know what? It is an example that if the Spirit and the power of God is in you, no matter where he sends you, what? Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your daughters, like Pastor Nick said, even women are going to be able to speak the word of God here. So, yes, the Lord has put a lot inside of me. And um, I was really quiet for a while in Iowa. I took that time to rest. I took that time to go into the wilderness. I submitted to the Lord. I kind of kicked and, you know, kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit at times. And, um, but I knew God was allowing it. And I had to battle through thoughts and things like that. Well, have any of you had to do that in the wilderness? Okay. So I'm just like you all. I'm no different. I've just been walking this Hebrew roots for a little over 20 years. So there's a lot in me. There's a lot I can share. There's a lot I can give. Does it make me any better? Does it make me any holier? It just makes me who I am. For such a time as this, God is raising up Esthers in the land. You are Esthers. You are Hadassahs. God is restoring who you are, and you're going to be an Esther in the land today. So this story is relevant for today. The story of Esther, everything in the scripture is relevant for today. You know, I, there was a time in my life where I thought the Old Testament was for back then. I always refer to, well, you know, back then. <laughs> well, you know, back in the old days. Oh, no, the Bible days. Remember the Bible days? <laughs> we don't have Bible days today, you know, scripture. No, but it's, it's revelation that is being restored uh, in our life. 
And, you know, one of the things as a, as a Christian growing up, you know, getting saved, born again, filled with the Spirit, all the different steps we take, which we need um, in order to go f- forward in this movement, which is really restoration. The movement is nothing but truth of restoration. Restoration of truth. All things. He said he's not returning until all things have been restored. Now, we don't necessarily know what all of those things are, but I think as we grow in the Lord, things are being revealed. So today, I, I pray you take your notepad out because, like always, I'm going to read the whole Bible to you. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, I don't know. This teaching can really be hard to, sometimes because it's like, thank you for my little makeshift table. I, I live in Iowa, so I got to have chapstick, you know. So that's my chapstick. But I'm telling you, it is still hot here. I said, oh, I'm going in some nice weather. And I'm like burning up. I had to take my scarf off. I had to, you know, I said, Lord, it's hot. I think it's the Holy Spirit. Or is it the lights? (laughs) It's the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's warm. Holy Spirit's inviting. The Holy Spirit. I would not be here today, and I don't believe any, any of you sitting in these chairs would be here today if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. And I, I feel like sometimes in this movement, we kind of forget about the Holy Spirit. And the Lord's really been pressing on me because of being in Iowa. Um, you know, the, the sitting in the living room for a few years was enough. I said, this is enough. I'm finding a Hebrew Roots group of congregation. I'm going to find a bait to heal in Iowa. Not. Instead, I found a bunch of homeless Hebrews. And what does that mean? No community. They're homeless. You ever, you ever seen a homeless person, what they're doing? They're just kind of walking from place to place, having no purpose that, you know, whatever God put in them, they can't even use it, you know, working a job or bringing something to the community. Well, that's what the Hebrews are like in, in Iowa. No offense, my Iowa friends. They're, they understand that God wants to build a community in Iowa. I really believe God wants to. It's Cedar Rapids. Amen. You're with me? You're going to use your faith with me? There's churches in Iowa. There's great churches in Iowa. I go to a great church in Iowa. My husband is part of a great church when I went there, and it's, it's awesome. It's great foundation. But the Lord said, now you have to teach these Iowans their Hebrew roots. Do you think I wanted to do that? Do you think my flesh wants to do that? Do you think my flesh wants to start all over in a living room? And we're not going to the living room. We're going to skip that part. We're going to a, we're going to a building somewhere. <laughs> So one of the things the Lord has really been impressing on me is, is God is building a community in Iowa, so please keep us in prayer. We've met some wonderful people that, you know, love God. They just love God, and they want to do more. You know, they, they, they've been saved, and they've been in the Word, and they've been feeding off of the Word. But now they need to use everything God has given them to reach a greater community. Like Pastor Nick says, we don't know who Israel is. I have no clue who, when I go out into the world, who Israel is. I know I'm Israel. I know sometimes I can talk to some people, like, oh, they're Israel. I remember, you know, Pastor Nick was sharing how he got to know us, and I remember uh, Danielle, which became his future wife, and she wasn't even close to that at the time, looked at me, and we're in the church, and he walks by, and she goes, Mom, he's the one that was talking about Israel. And I go, really? Really? She said, yeah. I go, really? And I looked at her and I said, we'll get them. <laughs> now, where did that come from? The Holy Spirit. It, it called things that are not as though they were. We'll get them. And look at them today. <laughs> Boy, did we get them. <laughs> but that's being led by the Spirit. I had no clue. When we started getting into this, first of all, I had no clue about being a pastor, how to start a church, how to run a church. All I knew is I loved to dance. 
Give me that music and give me the flags and give me the girls and the guys and we're going to dance for God. And God birthed it through our worship. Through the spirit, he birthed it. Not through all our knowledge, because you know what? I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge back then. It wasn't through the knowledge of knowing all the details in the Torah. It was through the Spirit. It was through loving God, trusting God, and being so in love with him that whatever he wanted to do with us, we're just going to do it. We're going to go to Israel. We're going to take 12 people. We're going to bring a banner, and we're going to march down the streets of Jerusalem and proclaim Ezekiel 37. When the two sticks come together, they're going to be one in the hand of God. And, of course, if you read that whole chapter, you get the whole picture of we were calling things. We had no clue about all that. We were starting to learn, but we were calling things that are not as though they were. And here we're seeing the evidence. Iowa, I see the evidence. I see the seeds, the seeds in Hosea that were scattered. They're starting to grow. They're starting to come up. They're starting to come out of the ground. They're sprouting. Like I watch the corn, and it sprouts, and it's little and little, and it takes a while, but boy, when it gets full grown, it's beautiful. That's how you are. When you get full grown, what, is, what does Daniel say? The book of Daniel? We are going to shine like the expanse of the sun, and what are we going to do? What are you going to do? Not just me, not just Pastor Nick. What are you going to do? You're going to lead many to righteousness. It's just not on me. Because every time, or Pastor Nick, when you come in this room and you learn these things, what happens? You're responsible to take it out. This, this uh, in fact, I, I would like some time for you to play the prophecy that was given over Pastor Randy and I about the Tabernacle of David. We were likened to the Tabernacle of David and that the, the uh, curtains were wide open. The doors weren't closed. Like the Tabernacle of David. It's for all mankind could come and seek the Lord. The Davidic covenant was for all mankind. That's a prophetic uh, view of what was going to happen was that the nations were going to come back, all mankind, to the house of God, to the the tabernacle of David, to uh, the house of Israel, being the house of Israel. So the prophetic word is that the doors were going to be swung wide open for those to come. And there were going to be those who were pillars, who were pillars. I see some pillars. And then there were going to be those who come and glean and take it out. Now, I don't know about you, but how many years of conferences did come? People come in and take it out. Come in and take it out. So we have such a history here that it's just unbelievable that when I think about it, it's, it's only the Spirit of God. So today, my message is on spirit and truth, because I really feel like there is a counterfeit Hebrew roots teaching, counterfeit Hebrew roots movement. There's a counterfeit. And if you don't know the truth, you can fall for the counterfeit, right? I mean, Satan is so close. He knows the word, and he can twist it. He knows enough truth to, to twist it to really mess it up on you, and you get tripped up. But... I've, I've been hearing a lot of counterfeit stuff since I've been in Iowa as we're trying to build a community. And there's a lot of teachers out there that use Hebrew roots. And I, I would really caution you to who you listen to. Are they building community? Are they gathering? That is my first sign of a true Hebrew roots community. Do we have it all figured out and all got it? No, we don't. Does Beit Dehila? No, but are you gathering? Because if you're not gathering, you are scattering. And that is not God's plan to scatter in the last days. His plan is to gather us in spirit and truth. We are to worship him. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't you know, okay, spirit and truth. And this, I've had this question before, too. Well, what is spirit? What is truth? Well, I would like to go on to the message if we have that on PowerPoint. And, of course, the scripture that is given is in John 4, 22, 24, and it says, You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him 
must worship him in spirit and in truth. It says nothing about the flesh in this scripture. And that's what I really want you to get, a, get an idea of what's going on here, that we battle. We battle our flesh. Don't be so hard on yourself. We all do it. We battle the flesh, the thoughts, the mind, the intellect. All those things is what we're battling. But what we want to get away from is the flesh and into the spirit. And this is how God has commanded us to worship him. So what is spirit? What is truth? It takes both of these things. So let's kind of dive in and find out what is truth in the scripture. You know, I'm the kind of person, if it's not in the scripture, then um, um, I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> it's scripture tells us everything we need. So that's why we're going to read through the whole Bible today. Okay, and you're going to help me out, people, when I'm halfway, right? Back there? Okay. So what is truth? Let's start with truth is the creator is truth. God the Father is truth. It says in Deuteronomy 32, 4, He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Yeshua is truth. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. So who is truth? God the Father and God the Son. Ephesians 4, 21 says, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning former conversa conversation old, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind has to be led by the spirit. This is your battle, is your mind. So we see spirit is truth. We got the Father, the Son, and here's spirit. Howbeit he, the spirit of truth, is come, and he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. I like that. Things to come. Don't be worried about what's going on in the world today. If you're in the spirit and in the truth, you're going to know things to come. He's going to foretell it. He already foretold it. What else is truth? Torah is truth. Now, mind you, not just Torah is truth. There's a lot of things that are truth in, in this that I'm giving you. So we need to have it all. The whole word of God gives counsel. So Psalms 19, 119 says, I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And your law, Torah, is truth. Trouble and anguish have overtaken me, yet your commandments are my delight. So we see the law, the Torah, is truth. Commandments are truth. Psalms 119, 150, and 52 says, They draw near who, who follow after wickedness. They are far from your law. You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. Concerning your testimonies, I have known of all that you have founded them forever. His commandment and his Torah is forever. They're not done away with. It's got its place, but it's not done away with. And hopefully at the end of this you will get a better picture. Because there's being around the church a little bit more and hearing their way of teaching law that it's done away with versus how we see it. I, I understand they don't understand. They're not purposely trying to throw the law out. If they knew what they were talking about, they'd be on their face in repentance. But they're not trying to do it on purpose. It's revelation. That's why we can't, Pastor Nick says it so eloquently, we cannot fault them who do not have the revelation. We pray for them and we encourage them. Amen? This one, this one. I mean, the entirety of the word is truth. That means every single word, every single word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, the Father, is truth. 
Consider how I love your precepts. Revive me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. You notice it always endures forever. His word endures forever. That's why we don't add to or take away from. If it's in his word, it's in his word. Don't try to explain it away. Now, sometimes we might not understand what God's saying in his word. Sometimes I'll read parts of the Torah like our brother shared. You know, you know you're like, okay, there's a lot of nuts and bolts. There's a lot. Okay, but what is the bottom line, God? And there is a bottom line because that's the Holy Spirit's part. The Holy Spirit is going to give us the bottom line. Seek and you shall find. We've got to depend on the Holy Spirit, not our knowledge, not all our giftings. Sometimes you're too smart for your britches. It gets you in trouble. Uh, it's, it's the simple people that are going to get it. You've got to be simple. That's why it says come as a little child. The children are simple. They don't have all the details. Just, oh, I want to praise God. and Oh, okay, I've got to do this. All right. You know, it's just simplicity. Come as a little child. That's all the father wants. Here's a couple of guys that were obedient. Hezekiah. He walked in truth. There was only two kings. Was it two kings? Only two out of all of Israel? Pastor Nick, was it only two? Yeah. Out of all the kings. There was only two that returned to truth. And they didn't even go all the way. They just kind of you know, started uh, on the returning. But in Chronicles it says, And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah, and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. That's what we're trying to do when, as we walk in truth. We're trying to bring what is all, well, all is good as we, as we walk in this truth. And in every work that he began, in the service of the house of God, and in the law and in the commandments to seek God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. There's prosperity in seeking truth. There's, there's a lot. And Josiah was another one. Josiah, King Josiah, he restored Passover, and it just started turning the, the people, you know. And I've seen this even in this movement. People start off with this, and they go back. And usually it's to their own demise, as even our brother shared on tithing. There's a, there's a counterfeit teaching. You don't have to tithe. And a lot of times when I see that in people that speak that, they live in poverty because you're going against the laws of God. Or you could just be making it, but like you said, the curse comes on you and it's holes in your pockets and it's coming in and going out. Whereas you can have enough to give to others. Have you ever thought about that, giving to others besides yourself? I think that's the true Torah of God. See, the Torah is way above. We haven't even begun to arrive at Beit Tehillah. We just touched the surface of this. That's why the greatest law is love. So here we see that we did have some kings that restored it, but then we see Israel forsakes the truth. They started off, they'll try to do right, and then they forsake it. It says, in Isaiah 48, when hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel, hello, and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth nor in righteousness. So what is truth? But Israel in the last days will return to truth. Hello? <laughs> Does that sound like a little bit like us? We're returning. Started with Yeshua. He had to die for our sins so that we could what? Be re renewed in the spirit. Get a new spirit. To walk in the spirit. So Zechariah 8, 8, And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in what? Truth and in righteousness. Remember, this is a prophecy of the latter days, and there's many prophecies of the latter days. What else happens in truth? But we're sanctified through truth. They are not of this world, even as I am not of the world. This is Yeshua. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 
The word is the law, is the truth. The entirety of the word is truth. Can't pick and choose, everybody. You cannot pick and choose of the old covenant to the new covenant. Actually, I call it the holy scriptures. A whole book is one book. We cannot pick and choose. It's the entirety of his word. And we're going to be sanctified by what? The washing of the water of his word. So if you're not in a word community that's not preaching the full word of God, you're going to miss some washing. Yeah, you're going to be a little dirty spot here. Or another dirty spot here. So, you know, you're going, to, you're going to have some dirty spots. Well, what is he coming back for? A church with what? No spots. No blemish. Now, granted, he's going to do this. But you're in the process. See, we're in the process. That's the beauty of uh, the Spirit of God. We're in the process. So, the washing of the water of the word that he might present to himself a glorious church, having not spot or wrinkle or any such, but that it should be holy and without blemish. What else are we going to do in truth? We're going to serve him in truth. You know, if you think you're going to serve God your way and you're going to think you're going to be blessed by it, you've got another thing coming. God has specific ways of how he wants us to serve him. You know, and, and it's like the, everyone's trying to figure out a way to serve God that's totally opposite of what his word teaches. And they think they're doing a good thing. It might be a good idea, but doesn't mean it's a God idea, right? We've learned that through the years. So let's do it God's way. Let's serve him in truth. It says in Joshua 24, 14, Now therefore, fear the Lord. That's a big one. I don't know about you, but I find that is a big missing component in the churches today, in all the congregations, the whole body of Messiah. We do not fear God. I mean, even to the point that we want to soften it and say, oh, it means reverence. Well, yes, it does mean reverence. But, you know, there's a holy fear of God. That if God said, don't do this, you don't do it. Because you fear him. Not because he's mean or he's abrasive, but that he loves you. That's like a parent. You, parents want their children to a certain degree to fear them. But not because you're abusive, but because you love them. And you don't want to see harm come to them. So serve him in truth. There's a song. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. May we not lift our heart to another. Cast down those idols. Serve him, but get rid of those idols. John 8, 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. What do you think you're free from? You're free to serve God in the way God commanded you to serve him. That's true freedom. Some people think they're free from the law. Well, there is, a, there is a part of the law we're free from, but not free to go and sin, not free to continue in our old ways. We should be changing and going from glory to glory. We should be changing. Your light should be getting brighter. When I come into this place, you should be getting brighter. You should be glowing brighter and brighter. Well, how, how do I see that brightness? I see smiles. I see a countenance that has joy, that is full of the spirit of Yahweh, that is not burdened down with all the cares of this world. That is your flesh. You've got to know the difference. Paul struggled with the two natures. He struggled with it. It's nothing new. You know, when I read some of these things, and sometimes we, some will take it like, many will be offended. Oh, well, I'm going to be offended. I might as well go with them. No, it's a warning. It doesn't mean you go get offended too and say, well, it's going to happen. It says, uh, it says I'm going to be offended. <laughs> No, it's warning you. Don't get offended. It's a warning. God is so good. God warns us. He's not trying to say, oh, this is going to happen. Oh, many are the affliction of the righteous, but I will deliver you out of all of them. God always has an answer and a way out. He is our help in the time of trouble. Why don't we look to the help? Why do we look at the problem? Why do we look at the pain? It's our flesh. The flesh likes to glory and all that stuff. But no, we're going to learn about the Spirit. What else are we to do? We are to speak the truth. 
You know, nothing should come out of our mouth unless it is in the spirit of love and it is the truth of God's word. Because it says, speak the truth in love. Ephesians says, therefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. We speak the truth. Well, what is the truth? The entirety of God's word, right? Sometimes, I don't know, you, you, you hear things and you go, well, I don't know if that's true. Don't speak it. That, that's the Holy Spirit. No, nope. you don't know it's true? Don't talk about it. And that, because what does that run into? Gossip? Trouble? Trouble? <laughs> Ephesians 5, 8 through 10 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. So there are some good ideas and thoughts that I got out of the word for truth. Does anybody other have anything other than that that they could think of that I'm missing? I went from the beginning to the end of truth. And that's what the Lord had shown me. So what do we want to go to now But what is spirit? There's a lot of stuff out there. A lot of goofy stuff about spirit. I've been involved in some of the goofy stuff. <laughs> But, you know, God is good. We're babies. Sorry. Um, we're learning. And it's okay if to be goofy sometimes, too. Um, but there's some strange manifestations. And for that reason, a lot of people want to stay away from that spirit stuff. You know, like, oh, no, that's just too, you know. But you got to go to the scriptures and find out what was going on. I think what I see when I see someone full of the spirit or the power of the Holy Spirit I see a lot of joy. You know, and you can be, you, we all have the Holy Spirit. If you've been born again, you have the Holy Spirit. And I know I'm teaching a Shavuot teaching today, right, Pastor Nick? But this is what the Lord gave me. But the, the Spirit is, we're, we're giving breath, we're giving the Spirit of life. It's a Spirit. But then God comes into our life, as Pastor Nick likes to say, is when God's spirit and your spirit meet, you get born again, then you get the Holy Spirit. And then along comes the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I believe there's three steps of the spirit in our life. But there's joy and there's a countenance of salvation that comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I believe with the Holy Spirit, sometimes you've got to get refilled up. You, got, you know how you fill up your gas tank because it's run low? I think I see a lot of that in the body of Christ today. And a lot of it is reason why you're low. Of course, the cares of the world. And uh, a lot of it's because you've seen a lot of goofiness in the church and in places. And so then you're totally afraid to get totally let the Holy Spirit, you know, make you maybe have some joy and laugh, right? On the day of Pentecost and poured out the Spirit, they looked like they were drunk. Why? Because what does wine do? What does it do? What is it symbolism of in the scripture? Joy. Doesn't mean you're going to do some crazy, goofy things. No, I've, I've, I've had the power of the Holy Spirit on me. It's heavy. You can feel the heaviness. But I'm not going to do anything that would offend, draw attention to myself, except it brings glory to God. Dancing, worshiping, celebrating, shouting hallelujah, that's the joy of the Lord. Do you think your flesh wants to do that? No. Your flesh wants to sit in the comfortable seat, doesn't want to have to get up. Don't lift my arms because I got pain in them. Don't clap. Don't sing because my mouth's dry right now. You know, we come up with all kinds of crazy things. And I'm not, hey, I've, I've been there. I've felt these things. I'm, I just want to sit down. I just want to sit and worship. No, you don't. You just want to be lazy. You know, you're, you, you have to. You have to allow the Spirit to speak to you. The Spirit says, get up and praise me. Come on, Susie, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love my Susie. She is my worshiping girl. You know, God brought Susie in the beginning days to us. And here she still is, praising God. There's a faithful woman of God right there. There's, I see a bunch of you faithful ones out here. So let's go. I'm going to go through the Spirit. The Spirit was from the beginning. 
It says in Genesis uh, 1, 2, And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God was from the beginning. It's not didn't start in the New Testament church, the book of Acts. And, of course, you take Strong's 7307 in the Hebrew. It meant wind, resemblance of breath, exaltation, Life, anger, unsubstantially, by extension, a region of the sky, by resemblance of the spirit, but only of a rational being, on and on it goes. Whirlwind, tempest. But you know what the spirit is? It's wisdom. Wisdom. You know, Pastor Nick mentioned something about, you know, listen, you know it's okay to listen to women sometimes. I believe God gave a man and a woman, and he brought them together, and the woman has that special part of wisdom that she brings into a man's life, you know. So I believe women should speak. You shouldn't argue or be contentious, but you should be able to speak. And I've had that opportunity and blessing. I've never been stifled from speaking. I, I thank my first late husband for that. I thank my new husband for that. And I thank Pastor Nick for that. We are a congregation that allow women to share the word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But I totally believe in men rising up and leading as women. Like Pastor Nick says, uh, when the men lead, the women are glad. So we have the spirit of wisdom. And it says in Exodus 28, 2 through 4, And thou shalt make holy garments. And I think this is the Torah portion. I, I was trying to find something in the Torah portion. Um, it's, it's next week's Torah portion, actually. But it was in the beginning of the Torah portion. A willing heart. A willing heart is the same as the Spirit moved you, is, is what happens here. And it says, Thou shalt speak unto all, the, the, all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the Spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And we'll stop right there, because I just wanted to bring out that back then, God would fill them with his Spirit. A spirit of wisdom. Wisdom is part of the spirit. How do we see the spirit? We see goofiness, people running around, that means they're full of the spirit. Well, sometimes it could be. But you know, it's not, it's very simple in the scripture. It's about wisdom, God's wisdom. Okay? Okay? Let's go on to the next one. So there's the spirit of wisdom. They were filled with the spirit, Exodus 31, 2 through 4. See, I have called by name, Bel's. Bezaziel, the son of Uriah, the son of Hur, the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge. Okay? Now, if you get a revelation from God, you might get a little goofy and run around the room. There's nothing wrong with that. But the, the, the result, the, really, the real true thing that happened is God revealed to you wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. That is what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. That is the real true moving of the Spirit in your life. So the filling of the Spirit supplied them with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. For, and we read this in the, in the beginning of the Torah portion. This is a pattern of the tabernacle. What are we? We are the tabernacle of what? The Holy Spirit. So that Holy Spirit lives in you. You're gonna, you're, the wisdom of God, the understanding, the knowledge is working in you. You're wondering why, well, what am I doing here at this crazy church? You know, the Spirit is different than the world. It's totally different. Who was the wisest man, of course, we know? It was Solomon. And he prayed for what? Wisdom. And so in this scripture, it says, Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established, for thou hast made me king over our people like the dust of the earth in multitude. And give me now wisdom and knowledge, that I might go out and come in before the people. For who can judge this people that is so great? And God said to Solomon, because this was in thy heart, thou hast not asked for riches or wealth or honor, nor thine of our uh, nor the life of thy enemy, neither yet has asked a long life. 
but has asked for wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. That's a lot to chew on. How many, have we thought of that, Lord? I need, I know Pastor Nick has, and I know I have in, as being a pastor, when you're in a place of, you know, leading people. How can I, how can I use wisdom with these people? How can I bring this to their life, to better their life, to bring restoration to their life, encouragement to their life? If we don't get God's wisdom as a pastor, as a leader, you are not going to be able to lead people in the right direction. What was Paul saying? Follow me as I follow what? Christ. So if we don't know, you're not going to be able to lead others. So we see that wisdom, and I'm going to go on to this, these are the three components of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, skill for wisdom, wisely, wit, of course the root, is to be wise, word or act, exceedingly to teach wisdom, be made, self-show, self-wise, deal never so wisely, and make wiser. So wisdom is growing in us every day. Every time you get in the word, you're going to grow in wisdom. That's why, you know, oh, I've read this before. Well, read it again. You don't know what the Holy Spirit's going to show you, what wisdom he's going to give you from it. Then there's understanding. There's to be intelligent by implication an argument, an extension, caprice, discretion, reason, skillfulness, understanding, wisdom. And the root is bayin, a primary, a primitive root to separate mentally or distinguish. Generally, understand, attend, consider, be cunning, diligent, direct, discern, eloquent, feel, inform, instruct, look well to, mark, receive, be prudent, regard, and view. Wisely, a wise man, to deal wisely. And then you have knowledge. Cunning, ignorantly know, knowledge, and unawares, wittingly. And the root is yada, a, primary, a primitive root to know properly, to ascertain by seeing, used in a great variety of sense, knowledge, acquaintance, advise, answer, appoint, assuredly be aware. The Spirit is full of the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding of God's Word. The Spirit is, is capable, completely capable, of interpreting it for you. Sometimes we read it, and my head knowledge is like, what? You know, I mean, well, kind of like all those nuts and bolts things, you know. But God has a deeper meaning. And without the Holy Spirit, you are not going to properly be Torah observant. That's a cliche in the Hebrew roots movement. Oh, well, we're Torah observant. And there's no spirit and no joy. I know, I've been around it. And I said, I don't want that. I, you know why Beit Tehillah was, was really, what, what was the motivator for, uh, for us to start Beit Tehillah? We saw a lot of Hebrew roots Torah people, and they had no joy. They had no peace. They were prospering. It was, you know, these are our witnesses to what, when you do God's word, God promises all kinds of blessings in his word. It's not to say we're not going to have testings and trials. I've had mine. We all have. But, but the end result is you are going to have the blessing of God. Since I have been in this, I have been nothing but a blessed woman of God. Blessed, blessed, blessed. And I keep getting, it gets more blessed by the day. <laughs> I get to come to Florida now and see my whole family at one time. How much more? And they're all here at church. I don't have to say, well, after church, I'll see you later. I'll see you in the next few days. I get to come and worship with them. Those are the seeds that are planted. Those are the things you want to plant in your family. But we, were, we had to set that example. It's not to say that you won't have situations that your children make their own choice. I just thank God that ours have so far made some good choices. Because really, when it gets right down to everything that I am sharing between about the, the spirit and truth, it gets down to you make the choice. You make the choice to walk in the flesh or you make a choice to walk in the spirit. 
Your flesh will tell you to do everything contrary to what the word of truth says. Your mind will battle you to the end. But you know what? That spirit is greater and powerful, more powerful than your thoughts and your mind and your flesh. You take authority over those. That's what I love about the Pentecostal word of faith teachings. They're great at teaching you that. Take authority. You have that authority because he that is in you, Kevin, is greater than he that's in the world. And who's in the world? The enemy. The enemy is constantly trying to pull you out, pull you there, pull you here, pull you everywhere but where you need to be. That's when you know this is the flesh. Where does God want me? So we see that spirit, understanding, and knowledge. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Isaiah 11, 1 says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Who is that? Yeshua. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. What's going to rest upon him? The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Where's our fear today? What, got me, what kept me out of a lot of trouble, everybody, was fearing God. I could have made some really bad choices, especially when I first got married. My early days of marriage. Pastor Randy's not here to defend himself, but bless his heart. But we, we struggle. How many of you, when you first got married, you thought, oh, it's going to be all perfect, you know, and... Not you, Belle. Linda's perfect. You better not be raising your hand. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, no, it was, it was, we struggled. We struggled to the point, and I'll be honest, this is family. I was going to get a divorce. I've ha- I have to say that I have been blessed in Iowa. I have saved three marriages since I have been there from getting divorced. These are, these are believers, and there's no, excu- there's no reason there's reasons for divorce. Get, get, let me get you. There's reasons for divorce. I'm not doubting anyone who has gotten a divorce. Because of people's hearts, Moses made a way, right? But I was going to get a divorce because that was just my answer. I mean, sometimes you just don't have the answers, right? Well, of course, I went to God. <laughs> and, and God gave me the answer. Sometimes we don't want to go to God. Because we don't really want the answer. But you know, if I would have made that decision, you would not be here today. Well, maybe you'd be in another place. Someone else would have risen up. God would have used someone else. My daughters probably wouldn't marry the godly men that they have today. And I wouldn't have my grandchildren sitting right here today. If I would have gone with my flesh, my flesh wanted a way out. But we have to submit to the Spirit of God. We have to bow our knee and say, Lord, I don't have the answer. I've messed up. I don't know, but I need you. It's all it takes. It's called repentance, you know. God is ready right there to put his arms around us. When Pastor Randy was sick with cancer and he was dying, I had no answers. Why is he going through this? I prayed every scripture there is. I believe in the Holy Spirit and the power of healing. I believe in that. And I still believe in that today. Even though my husband, first husband went on to be with the Lord through cancer, I believe in the power of laying on of hands and God healing people. Because why? The entirety of his word. Don't let, because it hadn't happened to you, don't let that stand in your way from the power of God working in your life. Satan wants to use these things to steal what he has for you. Because he is promised, and in these last days, we're going to walk in the power that you've never seen. You better get ready. But only those who are preparing are going to do it. If you're kind of sitting on the fence there, you know, what has he said? He neither wants you hot. He'd rather have you hot or cold, but none of this lukewarm stuff. You're not going to see the power if you're lukewarm. But the power is going to come upon the church. There is going to be a greater pouring, outpouring. The latter rain is coming, people, because we're going to need it. (laughs) I need it now. So I'm looking for it now. I'm prophesying for it now. I'm believing for it now. Okay, so here we have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Ephesians 1, 16, 18. Nikki, my friend Nikki back there. Basically, Nikki and I started this ministry, didn't we? <laughs> and what I mean by that is 
I found some godly women that wanted to pray and get into the word of God. This is about the time when I wanted to get divorced. I got away from all the negatives, all the ones encouraged me to go in the wrong direction. And I went to the ones that spoke life over me and encouraged me. And encouraged me how? Through the word. Reading the word, speaking the word, standing on the word of God. I still see us in that living room. All we had was a little tambourine. We had this funny looking horn. It was a Christmas horn, but we thought it was going to be like a shofar. <laughs> Despise not small beginnings. But it's that innocent, childlike faith. We came together with it. We didn't know what God was going to do. We, met, we had these one time, I remember we had these little flags, kids' flags, we running around our house outside, marching, waving our flags, you know, praising God. But, you know, God looked at that and said, look at my children. They don't know what in the heck they're doing, but look at them. They're praising me. <laughs> I said, oh, I hope my neighbors don't see, but who cares? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we were so innocent. We were so innocent. We were, we were at somewhere dancing for God that night. We were in a worship service. We were so innocent. We, we came out of that worship service. We saw these lights in the sky, and we thought those were angels dancing. We were all standing around. Dina, Danielle, Samantha, Nikki. We were like, and we had our flags. We just got done worshiping. We're like, Look at the angels. They're dancing in heaven. Remember that song, Get Those Angels Dancing Up in Heaven? There was a song by an artist at that time. And they were worshiping in those... And then we found out it was a car dealer that was trying to attract attention. <laughs> but you know what? It was our faith. We saw them as angels. <laughs> That's some of that goofy spirit stuff, you know? But hey, you got to start somewhere. But no, it, it was that we just had wanted God so much. We didn't care if he were, they were lights going around in a circle. But they were doing a good choreographed dance, I'm telling you. Because it was a circle thing, and then they go in and out and going around. I'm like, wow, that's Hebrew folk dancing up in the clouds. <laughs> God, is, he's got a sense of humor. But this scripture, I remember Nikki saying to me, this scripture, we would pray this over ourselves, and this is only part of it, but it says, cease not. And this was Paul praying for who? The church. The body of believers. He said, cease not to give thanks for you, making mentioning of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give it to you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You need to pull out that whole scripture. I've got it down on paper and I pray that over my family and over the, the body of Messiah. Because one thing I, my, my husband Timothy said to me, he said, because I would, when I went to Iowa, I was just so frustrated. So frustrated. Why don't they know they're Israel? What is wrong with these people? You know, it was just so frustrating. Because, you know, I've been in this 20 years and now I'm taken back into a place where it was like, it's like going back to kindergarten. And it was just very frustrating. And he said, Tikva, they, you need to pray this for them. They do not have the revelation, the knowledge and the revelation. But it's only by the Spirit. So you can talk to your brother in the face. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't share because I believe we are to prophesy it. it, it you call things that are not. You, when you speak the word of God, it's going to what? Come towards you. When you speak the word of God, it's going to go toward people. It's going to change their lives. That's why you pray, when you pray, you pray the word of God for people. You don't say, oh, God, get them. They're, they're, they're doing bad. You need to discipline them. And you need No, you, you, God didn't do that to us. Why would you do that to people that, uh, you know, even if you don't like them? We're supposed to pray for our enemies, do good to them that persecute us, you know? That's why this is a harder Torah. This Torah, we can only do it by the Spirit. It's easy to do the letter. Okay, yeah, okay, we do a Seder meal, and, and we do this, and we, we don't eat the certain foods. That's easy. But the deeper things of the Torah, to forgive and to love and mercy and justice and all these things, that's a harder thing. But we, it's not too hard because it was the promise given to us. That was the promise of the Spirit that was going to be poured out upon you all. All right, I got to go because I'm not even halfway through. Help me, help me Lord. I'm going to skip some things, but wisdom, knowledge, and understanding are definitely 
What is spirit? Well, I'm going to skip that one because you can go to your concordance and read all that. The promise of the spirit. Oops, did I miss that one? Hmm. Okay, the promise of the spirit. Okay, the promise of the spirit. Well, I got a different thing. I got Galatians 3 something. Well, let's go on. First of all, the Spirit comes from the Father. In John 15, 26, 17, he says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send you unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the mouth of the Father, the Spirit of truth comes from what? The mouth of the Father. It says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from what? The mouth of the Father. We live by the words of our Father. The Torah has red letters in that part. If you had a, a Bible that has red letters, the, most of the Torah is red letters. What is it? It's the word of God. It's the mouth of the Father. Yeshua is speaking what the Father says when he comes to earth. So, of course, we, we also, um, he speaks to you. The Spirit will speak to you. Okay, well, how do I know it's the Spirit? Oh, I've heard that before. Well, I just don't know if it's the Spirit, if it's me, if it's my flesh. Acts 8, 28, 30. He was returning, and this was Peter. I can't remember who it was, but he was returning and sitting in his chariot. He read from Isaiah, the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join themself, thyself to the chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him and read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? The Spirit said unto Philip. The Spirit, Spirit said unto Philip. His mind didn't speak to him. His thoughts weren't talking to him. It was his Spirit who was speaking to him. One of the wonderful many things that my husband Timothy is, he's very sensitive to listen to the Spirit. That's where him and I, you know, we're fitting together. He's bringing one part, I'm bringing another part into our marriage. But what I, what I so appreciate, appreciate about him is his quiet spirit. Sometimes it gets on my nerves so I want to talk about something. <laughs> my flesh wants to discuss this. <laughs> talk now. <laughs> and he's like, just be quiet, be still. Because usually if you do, that stuff will get out of the way. It's not even that big a deal. It's, you know. so, but the Spirit will speak to you. And what is it going to speak? It's definitely not going to be contrary to his word and to his truth. So you can line it up. Okay, is God telling me this? You can most likely line it up with his word. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time. The Spirit will stir you. Some of you need stirred in the Spirit. It says in Acts 17, 16, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his Spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. You know, the, sometimes sin and things that are going in, your, in the world, it's just stirred. It's, it grieves you. You're just like, you know, i got to do something. What can I do? What can I do to make it better? You know, you get stirred. Of course, we know we should take it to prayer. You know, and God will lead. Um, Exodus 35, 20 says, And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. They came, every one of those whose heart stirred him up, and every one whom his spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord's offerings to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. The spirit is going to stir you to do some things. Some of the things he's going to stir you to do is probably way out of your comfort zone. Uh, me up here teaching is out of my comfort zone. My flesh didn't want me to come. My flesh didn't want to come up here and do this. But my spirit stirred because it's the word of God that's in me. The power in the word of God that's in me stirred. I go, oh yeah, I got a message. But the flesh is like, oh, but you know, not, you know, you try to talk yourself out of it. But I'm here, praise God. I won't do it. I'm. I don't submit to the, the enemy. No way. You know what else the spirit will do? It will press you. Acts 18.5, when the Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. 
That means he was engrossed with the preaching. That's how I feel right now, pressed. I'm pressed in the spirit to share what I feel that's on my heart and by the spirit of God. He was totally absorbed. You know, you know how you know a person a lot of times when you get with them? That's why I always appreciated Pastor Nick. He always wants to talk about the Lord. He always wants to talk about God. Sometimes we've got to talk about, you know, we've got to cook dinner, we've got to do this, we've got to do that, but he, you know, and he puts God in there. That's good. But I'm the same way, so it don't bother me. But to some people whose spirit's not being stirred, it's like annoying. It's like, oh, please, can we talk about something other than that? I literally had a, a minister that came to minister one time, and he was a Hebrew roots teacher. And we, after he ministered, we came home, and I wanted to talk more about it. And you know what he said? He said, uh, oh, I've done that. I don't need to go back. I don't need to go anymore. I've done my work. I'm like, what's wrong with you? There's something wrong with that. If you're a minister of the word and you don't want to talk more about God, and I'm a, I'm a, a student and I need to hear more, hmm, that's questionable. Is he doing it just as a job or is it the spirit of God moving him? What else does the spirit do? Fervent. The spirit will be fervent. Acts 18.25, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spank and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. This was Apollos, and actually in one of the translations, he was burning with a spiritual zeal. Burning with a spiritual zeal. The spirit also gives us purpose. Acts 19.21, after these things were ended, purposed in the spirit when he was passed through Macedonia and Archaea to go to Jerusalem saying after I have there, been there I must also go see Rome so he was had a purpose it was a plan you have a purpose when you have that Holy Spirit leading you otherwise you're just kind of floundering all over the place nothing gets accomplished if you're not being led by the Holy Spirit here we go again you serve him in spirit and what it was truth too Romans 1, 9, for God is a witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. And without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. You cannot serve him without the spirit. You can serve him in the flesh, but he don't want that. He wants you to serve him in the spirit. You know, when you properly serve him and allow the spirit to use you, you will not complain that you have to watch the children's ministry. You will not complain because you might have to do this and this and this in one service. (laughs) If you're being led by the Spirit. Now, our flesh, no, I can only do one thing. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't do if you can't or not capable of fulfilling something. But on the other hand, the Spirit can do a lot more than your flesh. You'd be surprised how much more you get accomplished when you... uh, When we would do the conferences every year... um, Okay, it's a, whole new, it's a whole new thing. I need a whole new list of songs. I'd go, oh, my, oh, my, where am I going to begin? I'd sit down, and I prayed, and, man, within no time, we had the whole, the whole, the songs just would come. The Spirit would just bring it, and I'm like, wow, God. And then Joanne would say, wow, Tiki, Tiki where'd you get those from? Yeah, that's her little pet name. So I'm like, I don't know, Joanne. It's the Spirit of God because I was, like, lost. So the Spirit will lead you. This is what the Spirit is for you. He comforts you. You'll find this in the Scripture. Do your own word study. He comforts. The Spirit will guide you. What does it say? Into all truth. Your Spirit is your teacher. The Spirit is your instructor. That's why it says in Hebrews 8.8 8, that you'll have no need of a teacher. Right? Well, you will be in such a place in our life that the Holy Spirit... Because the law is written on your heart and your mind by this point that we'll have no need of a teacher because it'll be working in us automatically. We'll get to that place in the Spirit. And it says the Holy Spirit empowers you. The Holy Spirit brings you into all truth. So chill out if you're not arrived yet (laughs) because we're going to get there. That's the promise. It's a promise, okay? And it tells you of things to come. Do you think you need the Holy Spirit in your life right now? Today? Tomorrow? Next year? Into eternity? (laughs) So we see that he's our comforter. I'm going to run through these. He's our guide. The Holy Spirit searches all things. 
It says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear has heard, neither have entered into the hearts of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by what? Not by just reading his word. It takes the word with the spirit, but it's by the spirit. That's why you can read all the words you want, and you can be in Torah all you want, but if you have no spirit, you're not going to understand it. You're not going to get it. And then what do you become? <laughs> you become a pain in the neck. So revelation comes by his spirit, where sanctification is by his spirit. Sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. So without the spirit, you're, you're not being sanctified. It's a working out. It's a process. Few things of the spirit is that works that work. This is why you need community. Because if you're not in community, these things are not going to be worked out in your life. What does God give us? He gives us the fivefold ministry in Ephesians 4.11. He gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teaching. For what? Teachers. For what? What? For the perfecting of the saints. If you're not perfected, maybe it's because you haven't been hanging around some of these guys, right? Or women. Who knows? But the body, it's actually the body in action, body ministry. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we what? All come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, and to a perfect man, and to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Now, I, there's a whole teaching that even maybe Pastor Nick will do to break down the Holy Spirit. But uh, there's diversity of gifts, there's differences of administration, diversities of operation. And this is another uh, added to, you get the word of wisdom. And to another, we'll get the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Faith, how you know you get around some people and they just got a lot of faith, you need, that faith needs to rub off on you. Well, if you're not around them to get it, how are you going to get more faith? What if there's a word of knowledge, there's something you're going through, and someone has a word for you? By the Spirit, they give you that word. If you're not here to get it, if you're not around them, you're not rubbing shoulders, you're not going to get it. Who are you going to listen to? You're going to be out in the world, you're going to listen to the enemy because he's going to speak to you because you need answers. You need answers. Henry writes, what, coming next weekend, the thing that sticks with me by that man's teaching, he's done, I mean, he did a lot, but one of them was, who told you that? When I'm starting to feel kind of yucky and bad about myself, I go, who's telling me that? Not my father. Not the one that loves me. Not the one that created me in his image. Would he tell me that? Would he tear you down and try to tell you you're not good enough? Who's telling you that? Who's trying to tell you that? The gift of healing by the same spirit. There's some in this congregation that has the gift to heal. You could have a gift of healing even just through your words that you speak to people. Prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Is tongues for today? Yes, it is. This is why I believe Beit Tehila has made it where it is, because we were a church of spirit and in truth. So what are the works of the flesh? Galatians 5, 19, 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revel reveling, and such of the like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, have, have we done some of these things? Yeah, I, I'm on that list somewhere along the line in, in, in my life. Ha, have I maybe even done some of these things at this time of my life? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's why we have Yeshua. You know, sin, sin is always there. Temptation is always there. 
And see, what the enemy likes to do is tell you, oh, good look, you messed up. You can't do this. You can't. You can't live for God. You messed up. But the gospel is about a forgiving God that we go and we repent before him. Like David. Why do you think David was such a man after God's heart? David messed up many times. But, God, but David's heart wasn't to mess up. I believe all of our hearts are not to mess up. But we struggle with the flesh versus the spirit. I believe there's going to come a time when we are going to have more spirit than flesh. And I think we see that when you first come to the Lord as a little baby. There's a lot of flesh going on there. <laughs> but we have to be, what, patient, long-suffering, merciful with these that are coming on the road to Tashuvah, returning back to God. But don't let the enemy tear you down. Like I said, I was getting ready to get divorced. And meanwhile, I probably did some things, you know, but I just remember fearing God and saying, what I sow in my life. See, when we sin, we got to realize it's not just about us. It's about everybody else around us, too. See, we think, oh, it's my life. It's, I'm not hurting anybody. Yes, you are. And the thing that the Lord showed me is my children, that what I sow, my children will reap. If I made these choices, my children will suffer the consequences of my action. In some way, I mean, they have to grow up and make, you know, their own decisions. But, you know, I've been working at a daycare with small children. And it's been a real eye-opener because these are children that are mainly in the world. They're not raised with the love of God, some of them. And my heart grieves for them because of what they're seeing at home and what... And they bring it to the daycare. You see it. You can recognize it immediately. It's what they're being taught at home. And a lot of these children, unfortunately, are going to grow up very rebellious because of what they're seeing in their home. So what we sow, not only will we reap, because I don't know about you, but when my children reap bad things, I'm reaping it. So always remember the fear of the Lord. It's not just about you. It's about what you're sowing for the future generation. What you're sowing for these children in here today, for them to see, is for their, their future generation. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. What I like about the fruit of the Spirit, it's not just about doing all the Torah perfectly. Okay? It's so simple. But you can only walk by this by the Spirit of God. It's love, it's joy, it's peace of mind. God says, uh, the scriptures say, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and soundness of mind. You know, that soundness of mind could be the, the best thing you could have right now for some people. Some people are tormented in their mind, tormented. The enemy says things, brings them back, you know, like the bait of Satan. That's why it's so good. Get rid of that stuff. You still got that bait still going on in your mind. It's just tormenting you. Long suffering. This is, this is not only with, for us, but this is for, with, with each other. Gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. These are the things that are of the fruit of the Spirit. And I want to end, as I close this out, because I believe this is probably, to me, is Romans 8. Starting with verse 8, we're going to kind of just break it down real quickly here. But this is the scripture that helped me versus law and versus spirit and what was done away with because, you know, there's, there could be confusion. And it even says in the scripture that Paul, you know, because of the unlearned are listening to Paul and they can be very confused by his teaching. But what part of the Torah are we freed from? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from what law? The law of sin and death. See, now the Torah, which said if you sinned, you got the penalty, right? If you sinned, you're either going to die or you're going to be kicked out of the camp. You know, there was penalty for your sin. You're not kicked out of the Beit Tehillah. Why? Because that law is the law that he came to free us from. Because now we get to walk in the newness of the spirit. That is our choice. 
but we've been empowered by the Spirit. This is the struggle that a lot of people, you know, you, by faith you can believe for this, by faith you believe that. Can you by faith believe that you are empowered to not to have to be tempted and go into the sinful, to, to even go down those paths? We're empowered. We're empowered to walk in the ways of God. Okay, let's continue. Verse 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Because if you try to obey the law through the flesh, you can't do it. You fail. Don't you fail? The more you read it, the more you fail. (laughs) But God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh uh, do mind the things of the flesh. So if you're walking after the flesh, you're going to do the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be cardinally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. I want to be spiritual minded. Cardinal minded is miserable. <laughs> and believe me, I've, I've been in those, and I still get those times. I go, oh, this is the flesh. I'm getting back over here in the spirit. But because the carnal mind is enmity against God. So the mind is going to talk you out of the things that God would talk you to do or into. It would, it's totally. The, the, the flesh said, no, you don't want to get up there. You don't want everyone seeing you and, you know, and all this stuff. And you might talk funny and, you know, you might look stupid up there. <laughs> That's the flesh. Okay? For it is not subject to what? The law of God. Our flesh doesn't want to be subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. It can't be. So quit trying. Unless you have the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of this Holy Spirit, you can do all things. Through who? Christ who strengthens you. So if you have Christ, then what happens? If we are in Christ, if we've been baptized and we came back up, what does it say? We are a new creation. We have died to the flesh. Isn't that what baptism is all about? Have, you, have everybody in here been water baptized? If not, you might do a, have to do a mikvah. Go under that water and see yourself as coming up dead to the flesh. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness so your body basically you're already dead people a bunch of dead people sitting in here if it wasn't for the spirit of life that is in you the spirit of life is what is important when that person dies in the lord his spirit man is alive and well alive and well it goes and meets the lord So we're dead. So just die to all this junk. We have to mortify the deeds of the flesh. That's where we have free choice. Free choice to do that. Now, because you mess up, you know, we used to have the hellfire and brimstone churches. You're going to hell, right? So what people just gave up. I'm going to go to hell because I, 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 you know, I keep messing up. So I might as well just go and live for for the, the evil one. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You mess up and you... Have an, you have the Lord right there making intercession for you. I don't care how many times you mess up. Because I remember going to the Lord over and over and over about something. I'm like, you know, this is not right. I should be over this by now. Why it took so long, I don't know. But you know what? Eventually it, it happened. I conquered it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Being determined to allow God to work in me and allow the Holy Spirit to change me, allow the Holy Spirit to empower me, allow myself to submit to the Holy Spirit. See, we submit to the flesh, but are we submitting to the Holy Spirit? Okay, we're almost finished with Romans. That's why we don't fear death as believers. Oh, empowered to obedience. I love it. 
Why? Why are we empowered to obedience? Ezekiel 36, 27 says, And I will put my spirit within you, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. God is causing you to walk in them. See, when we think we're causing ourselves to walk in them, we fail. Trust God to allow him to work on you. Don't be so hard on yourself because God promises. He promises he gave us the Holy Spirit for the purpose of changing our lives. Let God work on you. The newness of the Spirit was promised to us in the renewed covenant that we have today. And you can look that up in Romans 7, 5 through 7. Walking in love is a very most important component of walking in the Spirit, to walk in love. That should be your first. Now, everyone has their version of what love is. Love is not meaning you, um, it doesn't mean you go and judge one another, but it doesn't mean you condone what one another is doing. Sometimes that becomes mixed confusion. Oh, well, you're supposed to love me. And yet, the word says to speak the truth in love. And if you love someone, you're going to speak the truth. It says, if you see a brother that's, you know, getting into trouble, you should pull them out of that pit. So that is walking in love. So don't let the confusion of mushy-gushy, oh, it's okay, do whatever you want. We love you. No, we love you, but we, we're going to tell you the truth. We're going to speak to you in the truth. So the, the battle is flesh versus spirit. Mark uh, 14.38, watch ye and pray. How do you battle this? Watch and pray. Because what? The adversary, the devil, is seeking to devour you. Scripture is full of warnings. You're full of warnings. Watch and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And the spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. It's your flesh, everybody. Tell your flesh to shut up. Tell your flesh to get out of here. Okay? Galatians 5.19. This say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Doesn't that sound so easy? <laughs> Just walk in the spirit. And it is easy. It really is easy. Or God wouldn't have given us the spirit. We need his spirit. Without his spirit, we are nothing. And I'm going to close with these scriptures. First of all, Acts 2.16.18. We are living in the time of the spirit. When, Shav- when the day of Shavuot came in the book of Acts, he poured out his spirit upon. It's, that was the beginning of Joel. It says in Acts 2, 16, 18. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servant and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now, you're not here at Beit Tehill to learn in all your learning to just sit around and come in here. It's time to rise up and prophesy to the world. It's time to prophesy to your neighbor. It's time to prophesy to your coworkers. It's time to be vigilant in spirit, fervent. Stir up your spirit. Stir it up through the word of God. It's just not going to, you think that it's just going to chase you down? No. You've got to fight for it. You've got to fight for it because the enemy wants to steal it. He wants to take it away from you because his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. But God says he will send you the comforter. He will send you the teacher. He does not take it away. He does not take it away unless you leave him. Because what was David's prayer? David prayed that. He said, Father, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Because he knew how important that Holy Spirit was. So in the spirit and in truth, we were the giving of the Torah. We were giving of the spirit of Shavuot. That day came to pass. The promise that was prophesied long ago was going to be poured out upon us today. We should be the most powerful people in the earth. But I think the enemy is clouded who we really are. See, knowing your Israel will bring you to a whole other level. And I'm going to close with this last one in Joel because this is where... Um, in Joel 2, 27, 29, see, God poured out his spirit. 
We are living in the season of Shavuot. Tabernacles has not happened. This is the beauty of knowing the feast days. Spiritually, you are on the same page. You have the answers, people. You have the answers of what is to come. We know Tabernacles is coming. But right now, we have to be a people of walking in spirit and in truth. And Joel said, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. You shall not be ashamed, friends. You shall not be ashamed. I don't care what you're doing. I don't, I don't care what you've done or doing. You shall not be ashamed. That's a promise from the Father, okay? And he says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. What happened to the Old Testament? It was only poured out on a few people. He only filled up a few. But we all get to now partake of the promise that was prophesied back in Abraham's time. That you would be blessed and you would be a blessing. Why? Because that Holy Spirit was going to be poured into you. And you're going to return back to God by the Spirit, not by your flesh. And it says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants, upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my Spirit. God's Spirit is going to be poured out. Are you ready for it? Quit looking at, I know, the news media and all that, it gets wearisome. But you know, that's not us. We are going to be a strong and mighty people that are going to move. Now, uh, uh, the disciples had to go through some things. Are you ready for that? But are you ready for the power of God that's going to move on people's lives? we got to quit. We, you know, do you know that in uh, these other countries, that uh, Iran, I heard a, a missionary to Iran, 7 million people have given their lives to the Lord. What, 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 why? Persecution? Is it going to take persecution? That's horrible. Why not come now with the love of God, the mercy of God that we have had over here in this country? So as I have been in another land, <laughs> in another place, God has really been speaking to my spirit about what the true Hebrew roots people are really going to be about. We're going to walk in truth, yes. But we're going to be walk and led. If you notice, spirit comes first. Because you can't walk in truth without spirit. Other, otherwise, you become just like the scribes and the Pharisees. They had all that truth. But what good was it? What good was it to them? <laughs> Got to have the spirit. They wouldn't bow their knee to that Yeshua was the Messiah. They wouldn't bow their knees. So let us today as a people start to bow our knees. I don't care what you've gone through. You know, I just want to take this time to pray, but we're going to get ready to jump up and hop around a little bit, okay? Because I'm bringing a little Pentecostal here to this, this, uh, this place. <laughs> and we're going to worship God. We're going to praise God. But I, I'm not talking about goofiness. I'm talking about the joy of the Lord. But I want to get serious with all of you today. And there might be some of you that are sitting in this place that don't even know Jesus, Yeshua, the God of salvation, as your Lord and Savior. You have to know him before you can have any spirit. Otherwise, you carry the wrong spirit. Without Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you do not have the right spirit. You have a spirit, but what spirit is that? There's a lot about that, and I didn't even go into that, about the spirits that they dealt with. (laughs) Evil spirit. Dark spirit. They were spirits. They were bad spirits. And thank God for deliverance ministries. But you know, sometimes all it is is just bow your knees and cry out to God and he will deliver us. And so I'd like for us to bow our heads because there might be someone in this room. I'm not going to ask you. I, you know, I know a lot of churches do that and that's fine to come up. But I just want us to bow our heads because if there's somebody in here that needs to know Messiah, Yeshua as their Lord and Savior, that is one of the most important things right now that they do in their life. So, Father, we come before you. We thank you for the spirit of mercy that you poured out upon your children, Father. When they deserved, according to your Torah, to the law, death, you are offering life. It's a choice. It's a decision that we all have to make, Father. And I just pray, Father, if there's anyone in this place, anyone at all, that has a heart to know you better, 
Maybe they've even accepted you but haven't really totally changed their life, haven't walked through the steps, haven't gotten baptized or laid hands on being baptized in the Holy Spirit or whatever it is that they feel they might be lacking. Sometimes we grow up in the church and we, and we don't really have all of it. We've learned about it and we've heard about it, but we've never really done these things. We've never really taken these steps that you require of us to come to you, Father. And all it is is a step of repenting and coming as a little child and say, Father, I need you. And I accept your son, Yeshua, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. No more the things of this world. No more is, is the enemy going to lead me down the wrong path. No more am I going in that direction. But I'm going to repent and turn and turn all the way back to follow you. And it's your word, Father. We learn today about spirit and truth. So, Father, by your Holy Spirit, touch their hearts. And may they bow their knees to you and accept you as their Lord and Savior. And the next step is to get baptized in water so that they can die to their flesh and come up as a resurrected new man of the Spirit. So I thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing at Beit Tehillah. We are not just Hebrew roots. In fact, that is probably the smallest part of us, Father. But we are a people of spirit and truth. So, Father, we thank you for the salvation. I pray for the Holy Spirit. And there are, th there are those here today that if you feel, uh, when we do the worship, that you want hands laid on and pray to be received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That means the empowering of the Holy Spirit to give you the strength to stand and to go forward in these days. And, Father, I'll lay hands on them and pray for them because I believe that. I will impart to them what you have imparted to them. Father, I thank you for the work you're doing. I thank you, Father, that it starts with repentance. I thank you, Father, that you are doing the work and it's your Holy Spirit. So may we worship you in spirit and in truth. And I ask all this in the name of your precious Son. no going back everybody branded will never be the same these messages are going out into the airways all hell's breaking loose right now there is no going back the message that god gave me is not it's not going to come back null and void it's going to accomplish all that it's going to accomplish if it's thinning out the herds if it's people leaving people coming god's word will not come back null and void i have spoken it it's going over the world wide web i've spoken it, and those that need to hear this will hear it and they will come back to yahweh they will come back to Yahweh with weeping and, and gratitude and gratefulness. Because God is a jealous God. It's not that we're better than anybody else. We're smarter than everybody else. It's that God wants us for himself. <laughs>